Hey guys, it's Dennis here with the Revog Games channel. I'm joined by Joshua Vayers, all the way in South Africa. Yes, and we just finished watching the Xbox Bethesda E3 2021 showcase, uh, highly anticipated. Um, you know, it's it's virtual this year, so it's not exactly the same. Uh, but we got some big announcements, some details on some big titles. Uh, let me just kind of give a broad overview uh, of what went down, and then we'll go into the games in detail. So we did. They started off the the whole thing with Starfield with Todd Howard. Uh, we got that big announcement. They ended it with a brand new. Um, IP uh, from Arcane Studios called Redfall, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. Um, no Fable, which was interesting. That's disappointing. That's disappointing. Um, but I will say, I will say, technically, technically, Dennis, we got a little bit of Fable. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. With, 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 For with Forza Horizon, every time they were showing off, every time they said, look at how good these boulders look. You know yeah. what I was thinking? Fable. I was like, <laughs> look at how good those boulders are going to look in Fable. You know, uh, every time they were like, look at how beautiful Mexico is. I was like, no, think about how beautiful Fable is going to be <laughs> using this engine. Like that's, I, that's, that, that was all I could think about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, and no perfect dark either, and no other mm. other than the 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 IP. They didn't mention it, but they didn't show us anything. Yeah, so other than the the Redfall new IP from Arcane, which will be obviously an Xbox exclusive because they own them now. Um, no, no huge new titles that we didn't really know about, but there were some cool things that happened. So let's start off with starfield this was kind of the big one the one that i was most looking forward to um i was wrong about the release date i, I for some reason i i don't know i just thought it was going to come out at the end of this year or early next mm. year um it's not coming out until uh november 11th of 2022 it will be i was right about it being exclusive uh, Xbox exclusive. Yeah. There is no there will no be not be any PlayStation version or whatnot. So that's cool. Um one thing that wasn't mentioned but I saw uh on Twitter that uh, I think Bethesda put out themselves. This is using their creation engine too. Um which is after looking at the footage that we saw we saw in game teaser uh, not as big surprise because it looks so much better than because you know the the original creation engine people have been harping on for years and years and years about how bad it looks, um, and they used it because it was it was a quicker way to get those type of uh, games that you know like Skyrim and Fallout and now Starfield done because it was just built for that that type type of gameplay mechanism in terms of the open world and NPCs and player choices and branches and all that stuff. And it was so much easier. So they finally created a new engine, which people have been clamoring for, for a long, long time. Well, well past two, but it does look a lot better. Uh, we'll see how it plays. The teaser was in game graphics, but it wasn't like actual gameplay footage, but it wasn't like a pre-rendered kind of CG thing. They were using the, 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 the actual engine to do it. Um, what would you would you think of this teaser? You know, Dennis, um, pretty much what I was expecting. You know, a, ho a whole lot of prettiness, but also a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like they, like I'm telling you right now that what we saw has probably got almost nothing to do with Starfield. Like, if anything, I feel like it's the the, the clip they show us in the beginning, and then they're like. Five thousand years later, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. It, it's, it just watching the video. It did kind of give me that feeling of like they were leading on, like, like they were kind of leading on to something bigger and more important. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. More sci-fi orientated. Uh, so I think that, yeah, whatever we saw, I don't think it really has much to do with Starfield itself. It just seems that like, like it has more to do with the setup and like, or like the uh, the exposition. You know what I mean? It seems like the like the kind of thing that we're gonna seeing the, like the first five minutes of Starfield when the game comes out and then never again, you know what I mean? Cause, uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Look, it's, it's, it's cool. It would have been cooler to see some like gameplay, but then again, I, I suppose, look, if the game's only going to come out in November next year, like that's like a whole year and more away. That's, um, longer than I was expecting. We do. Uh, but, cons but considering that that's the release date, I 
I guess it makes sense that there's not really any gameplay. Uh, like you said, it's definitely in engine. You know, so they made it with the. It looks like they made it with the engine. Um, it looks like we. That's. It, I feel like that's the graphics we can expect. You know what I mean? For the most part, mm -hmm. in game, because uh, with with space, there's a whole lot of uh, nothing, which is doesn't need to be rendered usually. You know what I mean? It kind of gives you that like room, to to make things look nice. But yeah, man. Uh, I feel I feel bad for Todd Howard. I feel like they they flew him out there. They're like, we're gonna you're gonna be on stage for exactly thirty seconds, Todd. We're gonna pay for your food and lodging. You're gonna come all the way out here. We're gonna have you on stage for thirty seconds just to show you uh, your solidarity. I was expecting him to like explain it a bit more or talk a bit yes, more about what the hell what it was, is. That's you know? what I was expecting. I did gain one piece of at least hint of something, which is. Yeah? The tone. So mm. we, for people who, you know, are, are fans of this type of genre and have played uh, Outer Worlds, which is from Obsidian Entertainment, who who did Fallout New Vegas. When you play that game, you can tell it, the Fallout history in there in terms of like the tone, the comedy, the kind of dark sense of humor, obviously the gameplay mechanics. Now... Off of this teaser of, uh, sorry, I was going to say Skyrim, Starfield, I realized, oh, they're not doing that. They're going the other way. They're going more the Skyrim Elder Scrolls yeah. route, where it's a more, more serious. serious. Yeah. So that's kind of something I was telling from that teaser, because I wasn't sure at first, because we've only seen, like, you know, whatever. I was really like, are they really going to do a, like a, a more like Fallout, or it's going to be a little weird and crazy? But no, they're going more serious. So... That's uh, that's something. Maybe it's a good thing because it's kind of, it's gonna... kind of, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing because it will separate itself from yeah. uh, out, out, of world. out of worlds, you know. Which we and got the out of worlds like, two announcement. So yeah, people are gonna want to play both. They're not gonna want to fight about which one's better, you know, because mm -hmm. they're gonna be fairly different just based mm -hmm. off of the feeling, like you said. Yeah. Uh, one last thing, and it's just something I've already wondered before, but it's kind of bring up again is how they're going to handle the open world nature of it. Because remember, mm. it's in space, so you're going to different worlds. I mean, outer worlds, it's like uh, you flew to different areas, so it was much more like Mass Effect, where, yes, you had these open areas, but it wasn't like one large, huge world, right? It was multiple, smaller scale. It was open world in that sense, but you had to you know, get in your ship and fly there. And I, I would assume that's how Starfield will work. Uh, as well um i don't know if maybe There's, they make the the worlds bigger than maybe outer worlds um, based off of what we saw if starfield is going to be what we saw which is really not much you know what i mean i feel like i really hope it's not this but if it's just going to be like a bunch of like moon bases and a bunch of dry nah. arid boring planets nah. it can't be that nah. so surely if that's the case they're either going to go with like 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 you said the same way that same way that outer worlds did it which is just big Oh, like big, not open world, but like big open, open spaces. Levels, you yeah. know what I mean? Big open spaces, big open levels. That or what they could do is they could look it, pulling off a game like No Man's Sky or generating a universe like that. I've we've seen a lot of knockoff like, per, well, not knockoff. There's a, a game called Osiris that did the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's the uh, Star Citizen, not Star Citizen. I, I forget which one it is, but that's a solar system, which is also like instead of focusing on a universe, they made a solar system. So, in theory, what they could do is they could maybe focus on little tiny solar systems. You know what I mean? Where it's like you'll be able to like warp from solar system to solar system, so yeah. it still looks nice. You get the prettiness of it, but it's probably only one planet and one section of that planet you can go to. But yeah, I'm assuming it's you like can Mass fly. Effect. Yeah, I'm effect. hoping you can fly there yourself, though. You know what I mean? That would add... That's the one thing that, uh, obviously, the Outer Worlds didn't have is there's no... Well, there's no vehicles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, Which, we'll I guess, look, Bethesda's not been known for vehicles, but I, I, they have amounts, though. You know what I mean? They've, they've always... They, they, you've had horses in Elder Scrolls series. So, hopefully, we get some vehicles. You know, you don't really get vehicles in Fallout, but hopefully, we get some vehicles in this game. Or we can at least pilot the ship or something. Yeah, uh, I think that'll add an extra level of coolness, you know. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some of the other big announcements as well. Um, oh, like uh, Stalker Two was a huge, like, big hype for that. I never played the first game, 
but uh, it looks great. Like what they showed us looks amazing. But that's Doesn't not ex. Like but it's not a, enjoy. But it's not exclusive, right? That's a no. But they did they did cover it though. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't think it's exclusive. Yeah. Um. But it did look good. It was uh, yeah. it was part of the showcase. It did look good. Not my kind of game because it looks like it's gonna stress me the hell out. But uh, that did look good. So that was worth talking about. Yeah, yeah. Stalker games always visually look mm. really good. Um, it's coming out April twenty twenty two. What do you think Contraband's gonna be? That I don't That's know. The, they showed us that cool like kind of cinematic yes. like without really showing us anything. I'm guessing it's gonna be some kind of heisting game mm -hmm. similar to Payday, but instead of focusing on bank robberies, maybe it's gonna focus more on like elaborate heists or something uh, with your friends, which could be quite fun. In theory, you know. Yeah, that was the one that we got like yeah. the least amount of information about. Yeah, it's a co-op open world game, so I'm guessing yeah. it's going to be very heist orientated. Yeah. Yeah, but this this is kind of a big piece of news, and this kind of is going to leave uh, lead into some some bigger discussion, which is Back for Blood. This is a game that you've been looking forward to. Mm. I've been looking forward to as well. Um, it's a spiritual sequel to Left for Dead. Same uh, developers who had who had left uh, Valve. They show a bunch of cool gameplay footage. Uh, they show that there's like the, the swarm PVP. There's the human versus zombie. It's coming October 4th. But guess what? Day one on Game Pass, <laughs> which was kind of the theme of this. Yeah, this it was just uh, a Game showcase. Pass commercial, pretty much. The entire showcase was just a Game Pass commercial. Okay, which I mean, I'm I'm happy about because every single every single trailer, every single like video they dropped, it was like, hey, you're spending your money good with us, you know? That's, yeah, it just reassured my investments. That's well, let, I, let let's get to your thoughts then about the actual footage that you saw, and then we'll let's discuss the whole Game Pass thing. Um, I'm excited for Back for Blood. The fact that it's going to be day one on. Uh, Game Pass is good, first of all, for the servers, which is not something I would have worried about. I knew the servers would have been busy or full, but it's uh, it's definitely going to do well for the player base and the longevity of that game, I think. Um, everyone's stoked for it. I'm stoked for it. Uh, I know we spoke about it on the podcast mm -hmm. a, f a day or two ago about them adding a few new monsters and things like that. It looks fun. It's one of those games where, like I said, you can't go wrong with it. Just give us a four-person co-op zombie shooter game. Mm -hmm. Something that's like not too intense. It's like, it's yeah. Look, it's it's a no-brainer in terms of like uh, getting it done. I'm glad it's happening. It's happening soon, day one on Xbox Game Pass. So I'm excited about that. Everything, well, pretty much everything we're going to talk about is day one on Game Almost Pass. Almost everything. I, I've noticed. Almost, yeah. So let's kind of get the, into this discussion a little bit, and maybe we'll come back to it again later. Which is for the vast majority of stuff that was announced. I think there was like almost it was like 30 something almost 40 games announced um like what what would you say like 80 90 percent of them were going to be on game pass um yeah the only much. the only games that weren't going to be on game pass were like the big third party studio titles which we're talking about a battlefield battlefield uh 2042 um what else are we talking about like uh i mean there wasn't that many like is that the, i'm trying to think what well, was like the other big ones that weren't like um gonna be on game bass was it was that it i'm like looking at this list and like n almost all of them are gonna be on game pass um but oh far cry um so you're, right, you're yeah, that'll you're, be that'll be on ubisoft plus most likely which is a service yeah. that's not worth it but yeah <laughs> but what i'm saying is unless you are a big third party like an ea Ubisoft, uh, uh, your your games are most likely going to get folded into the Game Pass, uh, yeah, ecosystem, which is a good thing to be honest. Because look, Back for Blood is a game I was looking forward to. It was one that was, to be honest, like I wasn't sure if I was going to get it like day one. You know, like. Maybe I'll buy it later. You know, I do love zombie game. You know, zombie shooting games, especially when they're done well. Like, I was, you know, I've always been talking about World War Z. They're gonna have that World War Z aftermath, which you know, yeah, um, looks good. Looks good, and you know, it's it's an arcadey type of zombie shooter, much like Left 4 Dead is an arcadey. You know what I mean? Like, you're not. Mm. It's not like really like well, yeah, it's very arcadey with yeah. waves. You're doing waves yeah, wave and, after each. 
you find a place to bunker down and you just you mow and you down, hold yeah you and know? you hold down the the trigger button you know what I mean which yeah. I actually I remember that I don't remember if they ever changed this but I remember the first Left 4 Dead wasn't even the trigger button it was like the A button <laughs> he's just like you know yeah. hold, held it no, down no, it, um, I, I only ever played it on PC but uh, okay but I know what you're talking about so what I mean to say is that now that this is day one on Game Pass for me someone like me it's like okay. I'm going to buy I don't have to buy this. I don't have to put any money. I already I have Game Pass for, you know, another year and a half. Day 1 it comes out, I'm downloading and playing it. Just m- much like uh, a bunch of different games. Like uh, you know, we very surprised about that game uh The Medium, like where you know, I didn't look that good to me to be honest, The Medium and then it was on Game Pass. I was like, ah, I'll download it and then I quite enjoyed it. You know what I mean? So it's it's just like this type of move that's really going to put Sony kind of in a corner. You know, obviously Sony has some great exclusives, you know, God of War, Ghost of Shima, Last of Us, Uncharted, um, a whole bunch of other stuff. But you have to pay for all those games individually. And therefore, the value proposition just isn't that high. I mean, with all these announcements um, from Xbox with all these Game Pass stuff, it's like, okay, like if 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 I, I have to take a look, like look at the list and see which ones are for PC and which ones are for the console, and then decide because uh, if there are some that are only console stuff. Not that I won't get a PS5. It's just I might get an Xbox Series X first because just the value proposition is just so I was going to say at the way at the way things are looking. I mean, it's it, I mean it's it's also the slightly better console in terms of performance. Yes, you know, it's only slightly better. But at the rate things are going, ideally, like I'd want to have both anyways. Yeah, I eventually just, we'll have a PS5. Like, as like well. I mean, look, look, I in an ideal world, I think everybody wants to have both. You know. But uh, I think you're. I think you're right. I might end up getting an Xbox first as well, because uh, there's a couple of exclusives, you know, that it also just I know will play better on console than PC, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so this but, was, were you excited about this next one that I'm going to talk about, which is the Sea Sea of Thieves, a pirate's journey featuring Jack Sparrow and the Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean. That kind of came yeah. out of nowhere. For I mean, I'm not a. I, I've never played Sea of Thieves, but I know you rave about it, and I know people are like hardcore about you know playing it because it's, it's a fu- it's a fun game but the thing is like there's never really here's the thing at the end of the day the reason why people fall off of sea of thieves is because there's really never a true point to anything mm-hmm. you know it's fun it's fun you're just always kind of going on these endless quests with your friends all the money you make in the game you spend on uh cosmetics in-game mm-hmm. cosmetics that you could pay with real money too if you wanted to but there's really no point you can actually just go play the game and get the money in game mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's mainly just for fun with your friends. There's no real objective to the game. There's no overarching story. There's no like uh, this. Just gives it like the game more more objectives, more things to do. You know what I mean? Which I I think is fun. I was not expecting this. I, also because of like licensing rights. I'm wondering how they pulled it off. But that's like something I don't really even want to think about. I'm just happy it's happening. Yeah, and it's, it's going to get more people to play the it's game. It's free. Again. Yeah, it, it's it's free. Yeah. Which when when they when I saw the name of it, I was like, oh shit, is this going to be like I thought paid, it was paid, paid DLC? I thought it was going to be part expansion. two. I don't know. Well, no, because I I could tell that the graphics were still Sea of Thieves. Yeah, that's true. But. Uh, I was, but I was wondering what I, I thought. Maybe what they were gonna do was, for a second, I thought maybe it's a game that they were like, "Hey, it's this, it is Sea of Thieves, but we here's a, here's a campaign, but you got to pay for it, you know." Mm-hmm. And it doesn't look like it's if if it's free, it's not gonna be a campaign, but it's definitely gonna be like some kind of like in-game event. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long it'll last. It'll probably they'll probably push. It'll. I'm guessing they're hoping that this will boost sales for the battle pass, which is kind of obsolete in my mm-hmm. opinion. I, I, if they have one, I think they do. Um, but look, I'm, I'm excited to play it. It's going to get a lot of people to play the game. It's going to get the servers busy again. It's fun. It's on game pass, uh, on PC and Xbox on console. Like it's, it's fun to play. Even if you don't have friends, you can make friends in the game. It's really cool. And it's free and it's June 22nd, which is not that yeah, far that's away. That's soon. That's yeah. really soon. They, they kept that under wraps. Um, all right. Uh, next thing we've got, uh, Yakuza like a dragon. They just, it was more of a commercial. The, it was, yeah. It's a game that already had come out, and they're like, it's on Game Pass. 
Go check it out. Which makes sense because like they added all the Yakuza games except for that game. I I was actually I don't I don't know if you recall like very briefly I complained about it a while ago. I was so Mm. upset that they added all the Yakuza games except for the newest one, which is the one that I really wanted to play. But hey, they said it's on it's on Game Pass now. today, is what they said. But I'm checking it and and it's not there. It's, I'm checking it right now and it's yeah. not there. So I'm wondering if they meant it's only on console right it might now be. today. Might be. You know what I mean? That, I, that that's me, the whole yeah. thing of whether you know how soon I'm gonna get an Xbox Series X because it's like depending on what stuff is. Uh, console Game Pass or PC Game Pass or both. You know, it. You know. Like I said, I actually thought about getting the S, the Series S. The only problem yeah. I had with that was that the hard drive uh, was much smaller. And it's like, and it wasn't even, yeah, it wasn't even the graphics or anything like that. It was just the hard drive was smaller. And it was like, well, if you're going to pay for extra hard drive space, you just end up paying almost as much as a Series X. I you know think you, I, mean? I think it was also, you, you're not going to get 60 FPS at 4K. It was 4K yeah, yeah. 30 FPS. yeah. yeah. Which is not not the end of the world, not too no. bad. Um, uh, the next one is uh, they showed. You know, we we talked about them in our weekly podcast. If if you're watching this and don't know that we do a weekly games podcast, um, Battlefield Five. Uh, f- well, what was supposed to be Battlefield Five now Battlefield uh, 2042. They showed mm-hmm. off some gameplay footage, and I had I was you know messaging yeah. with you back and forth, and I was like, wow, this got me way more hyped than that trailer did before. Because I had been kind of complaining about like not complaining but kind of like posturing the uh, the um, or posing the the question of is this game going to be worth it because it's a full price game versus a lot of free to play games. But you know, watching this gameplay trailer, it's like wow, this looks cool. You know, you get to see the the sh- the shots from inside the tank, all the vehicles, all the players. The I don't know, it, it just gave me a much better sense of what the game was going to be and much more hyped than that almost i want to say like almost call of duty like trailer that they had released the trailer yeah yeah this it, this was like, much more the, exciting to me it looks more fun like yeah. it looks i will i will say uh in terms of worries like because right off the bat i was like i want to play this game this looks fun the wingsuits look fun everything looks fun uh, in the trailer there's a they, they kind of recreated the trailer but in game like a lot of the things that happened in the in the gameplay trailer happened in the actual trailer but they decided to show it show it to us from the in-game point of view, which I liked. Yeah. So it kind of justified their original trailer. Where it's like, hey, look at the original trailer. We just did all that in the game. You can do all that in the game, which is really cool. Um, but I will say, I wonder if the tornado will get, if you'll get sick and tired of it after a while, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder if like after like a couple of weeks of playing the game, you're like, God damn, this tornado is working on my tits, man. Mm-hmm. You know? It's, it looks like it'll be fun, but also annoying, which I guess is the, the implement of it. But who knows? I'm sure they'll find ways to nerf it, maybe implement it less or more, depending if it's not enough. We'll see how that goes. It looks fun. I still have the question, which I don't know if I asked this question last time we spoke about Battlefield, which is why the hell are there ATVs on the roof of buildings? Because in the, in the gameplay trailer, we see someone like launch an ATV into like an into a helicopter and blow it up and i was like why the heck is there an atv on a on a on the building of a uh um on the on the roof of a building and i was like that's so stupid Mm -hmm. but then 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 there they are in game and i was like i was i shit you not there's an atv on top of a building how did it get there i don't know but it's there and they launch it into the helicopter and blow it up so yeah Mm -hmm. like it's i I won't question it but yeah it's cool it looked like a lot of fun yeah um, all right, next game. This game I'm actually looking forward to. Wait, was a... that wasn't that also day one for Game Pass? No, it was not. No, okay. No, no. That would have been a big deal. That's what I'm saying. These big third party games yeah. are not, but uh, everything else is. For example, the next topic, which is 12 minutes. This is a game from mm. Annapurna, very story driven. It's a top down view. They have some. Uh, I forgot who the two like lead actors are, but they're they're like big. Let me look that up real quick. Um, but anyways, the whole big thing about it is this is a game I was much looking forward to. It's not a typical type of yeah. game. Um, I heard a lot about this game, like before this, like it, it had been like yeah, been making moves in terms of like the story and how like like it looks very deep. Yeah, it's it's, I mean? it's a time loop game, um, and it, it's a game that I had planned on getting. I mean, I was assuming it wasn't going to be a full price game anyways, but guess what? 
Game Pass, but I think it's console Game Pass only because it said console exclusive. So I don't know yeah. exactly. Let me look at. I'm, I'm, console oh, launch exclusive. Okay. James McAvoy, Daisy Ridley, and William Defoe. It's a big. That's a big voice cast. Yes. So I could have sworn I heard J.K. Simmons as well. So Xbox, Bex, Xbox, and PC. So maybe it's Game Pass only for console, and then maybe PC mm. you have to buy it or whatever. So that, that's what I'm saying is like these things are gonna make me think about you know when to get a kind of kind of a little regretting like I had an opportunity to buy Xbox Series X a couple months ago and I didn't. <laughs> So I'm like, hmm, maybe I should have bought one. I, I had mentioned, you know, I've been mentioning before, like both P, both PS5 and Xbox Series X for me, I just haven't had like super deep motivation to, to buy them yet. I know they're not available for sale because they're all sold out. I just, there just hasn't been anything pushing me. But, you know, with, with the upcoming this fall season, it's getting more and more, um, I think that the, I think Horizon is going to run better on console than PC, or it'll be more optimized for console mm. than PC. I think. Mm. Um, all right, uh, Psychonauts two, uh, August twenty yes. fifth. What you want to talk about that? I'd love to, man. I cannot. I've been first of all. I never thought I would ever get a sequel. So when they announced this game, I think two or three years ago, I was so excited. Mm -hmm. It's it's not the kind of game that I would want like be excited about today if it wasn't for the fact that I did play the original. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? If this was its own thing, it's like it's not my cup of tea. I do like platformers, but um, also like you reminded me, they own uh, Xbox owns Double Fine, yep. which is yep. cr crazy because like I love Double Fine, love Double Fine, but uh, a lot of their games like. I've played on PlayStation, you know, like uh, Brutal Legend with Jack Black. Played that on uh, PlayStation. Uh, then, yeah, even, well, 2005 is when Psychonauts came out, and I played that on PlayStation 2. So it's, like, so weird that there's going to be a sequel to Psychonauts. Like, t like, how long has it been? Like, 15? No, I'm not doing math right. Yeah, like 15, 16 years. 16 years. Over 16 years. 16 years, years later. And I'm going to end up playing it on PC most likely, which is interesting to me but yeah really looking forward to it like the platforming looks good it's one of those silly games lighthearted, most definitely geared to geared more towards kids mm -hmm. um i'll be playing it anyways just because i'd like to see the continuation of rasputin uh it's all about a game where you go into the dreams of other people into the minds of other people mm -hmm. and you kind of focus out or work on their uh trauma <laughs> i yeah. guess if you will so yeah that's another game class game pass xbox slash pc mm -hmm. exclusive that on you know, launch day yeah on day one that's, so. yeah, that's on launch yeah it, it's just at this point it's like if you have a pc or an xbox there's no reason why you shouldn't have game pass unless you don't mm -hmm. play games or you, or you like forking over a lot of money uh yeah man if you, if you got a pc get, get game pass for pc it includes ea play it's so worth it you don't have to have ultimate for uh to get ea play if you have P game pass for pc but if you have an xbox and a pc like me you just get, definitely get, ultimate. get both get, it's, worth, get, it's yeah. definitely worth the money um after that they had uh this kind of mid this uh, kind of bethesda update part they're like you know it's this 10th anniversary of skyrim and they showed a lot oh, of yeah. Fallout 76 stuff. Uh, there's two things. Steel, Steel Rain, which is going to be a free um, expansion uh, July 7th. They also announced the Pit expansion uh, for people who had played uh, Fallout 3. They had uh, a DLC that revolved around the Pit. Uh, I don't know. They didn't really give a lot of details on this one. Um, that one may be a paid one. Um, I'm not too sure. Um, they filed it under the Expeditions, which may be a, a paid DLC. I'm not sure, too sure. They mentioned Elder Scrolls Online, but you know, it's it's just kind of remind you these 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 games are, are there that you can still play, uh, and that are ongoing games. Um, the next thing up, Party Animals, which look like Fall Guys. <laughs> Is that am I am I saying? Uh, did you ever play that game, um, Fall Guys? I did play Fall Guys, but no, I would relate it closer to Human Fall Flat. Okay. It's a lot like it's actually a lot like Human Fall Flat, 
and Gang Beasts. I wouldn't okay. be surprised if it was from the same people that did Gang Beasts and Human Fall Flat. This is a game that I have played before. I think that this was to announce the console launch, which I thought okay. that this was on console already. Because I know it was on PC. Uh, a, a lot of streamers were playing it a couple, like a, a couple months ago. Um, but it's really fun. I've played it before. It's genuinely actually a great party game. Really fun to play with your friends. Uh, just cha good chaotic fun. Um, and yeah, did they say that's coming to Game Pass or? Uh, yeah, it is coming. I'm telling yeah. you, all, all these games are coming. I wonder, but I, I think it's it's, it's console. Uh, no, it's only console. Yeah. It's only console. console. Yeah, because I was gonna say, yeah, uh, sure uh, trying to sell it on PC. It is from the developers of Gang Beasts. Um, mm, that makes sense. That makes sense. Gang Beasts and Human Fall Flat, because those are like it literally looks like they took the two games, linked it together. Um, very like physics based games and they're they're quite fun. They're they're funny, they're fun to play. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh Hades coming to consoles August thirteenth. Coming to Game Pass, just Game in Pass. general, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Which another, yeah. you know. I never bought it. Everyone raved about it. It was a uh, game of the year for a well, lot of people. Now last you can year. try it out. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I'm it's saying about this game. whole Game Pass thing and, and the value proposition of xbox it's just it's just gonna tie me down because it's not that i don't want to play these exclusive ps games but if if i'm getting these other games for you know free um, essentially yeah well, essentially, for the price of one game a year essentially <laughs> well, two games a year but you know or one well, and a half a year, or whatever yeah. i guess um yeah you're just it just it's gonna keep a hold on me because it's like okay well I just I don't have to spend any more money and I can just be entertained for a long time. Um, Somerville was a cool uh, kind of looked like a two D side scrolling animated. Uh, people were screaming last is this Last of Us three <laughs> in it. Uh, looks cool. Um, this is uh, enjoyed I, the music. I love how like. I was able to tell right away that this is from the people that did inside mm. just from the, the way that they do the, the, the lighting, the hard shadows. It's got, it's got that noir feel mm -hmm. um, like very, yeah. Limbo inside. This looks great. I, I like, I've always enjoyed those, um, those 2d platformer narrative experiences. Um, and they've always been fun and they've always been like fairly cheap, you know, cause they know that it's a game that you can usually finish in a few hours. So they don't, sell it for too much you know what i mean yeah well game pass um, 2022 so like i said like especially the lot of these small indie type <clears throat> games perfect for game pass because it's like would i ever buy them? like okay 12 minutes i i would have bought i mean that's it is a studio so it's not quite uh indie um but just some of these smaller games that maybe i wouldn't wouldn't be sure about purchasing now i gotta try them out um now the big big thing that came in the middle of uh, the showcase that we were all looking forward to is uh, Halo Infinite. Yeah, uh, they showed a new kind of in-game scene uh, with Master Chief jumping around a bunch of uh, space debris. A new uh, Cortana. Or yeah, Cortana. I guess Cortana is deleted, and then there's this fake Cortana. <laughs> what are the, the new, new one? We'll, that, we'll, we'll call her the Samsung girl for now. Yeah, she's yeah. Uh, a little more jokey, a younger, less serious version of Cortana. Tim timid? I, I want to say timid. She's kind of timid. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyways, she's going to be the new voice companion as you look, look for it's like the search for Cortana instead of the search for Spock. It's Halo, the search for Cortana. Uh, they really, you know, other than that part, they didn't really emphasize the solo campaign much. Uh, they actually didn't, yeah. sh they didn't show they any. Showed off, they showed off one of the the areas, which yeah. they also did previously. Yeah. Like, they're like, this is the biggest open area we have and can't wait for you to explore it. And it looks great. Uh, but I think the most exciting part was the multiplayer. The multiplayer looked really fun. Like, like, and I can't wait to play it, especially because it's free to play. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to the multiplayer, actually, because it's free to play, so I can hop onto it on PC. And, like, right at the end of the multiplayer, there was a freaking Japanese Master Chief outfit. Samurai, like, like samurai a, suit. A samurai you Master know Chief. That, I was like, that, that is looks the, sick. You know that is going to be a paid 
cosmetic that uh, is not gonna be free uh um, most probably i mean how are they gonna the make money free to play yeah yeah why else would the multiplayer be why free? do you think they ended with that awesome suit so you can buy You're right it. it's gonna be it's gonna be in a battle pass or it's gonna be a skin 100%. yeah yeah, yeah. And so they actually mainly focused on this multiplayer like we mentioned it's free to play this free to play market is it's pretty saturated but i would say because halo is an established name much like how call of duty when they launched Warzone, it was like you already have a uh devoted fan base uh when you launch so once you it's free to play you're gonna have people playing it no matter what same with halo if you're gonna be even in a saturated market people are gonna play it and, and f- for someone like myself who is not a huge you know like i don't play like fortnite uh apex legends i play uh not that often but once in a while um this is something that I definitely will be playing um, because Halo is just, you know, one of the funnest kind of multiplayer, sh- you know, online experiences, even before it was free to play. They have heavily em- emphasized they still didn't have an exact release date, though. Do you notice that it was holiday 2021? Yeah. They, it's, they just uh, said it's coming out together. They're like, "Hey, we're not releasing them at different times, like we said last year." We, when we, we, which, to come out. <laughs> which we speculate was the reason for the delay. Because uh, remember, it was supposed mm. to come out, uh, and I, I assume probably the campaign part was probably ready to go last year, last fall. Well, the, uh, the, the campaign will, the, look, the campaign's going to push people to the free-to-play multiplayer, yes. and the free-to-play multiplayer is going to push people to the campaign, so it makes sense. They go hand-in-hand. Hand, they help it, each other. Exactly. Um, yeah, 128 players, too, they announced. So it's going to be a very big, big map. Um I don't know if that is also on like Xbox uh, One, but uh, I'm assuming that's at least for PC and Xbox Series X. So looking forward to that. We still waiting for that release date. Uh, I never was into this game, Diablo 2 Resurrection. It's it's, it's coming out uh, September 23rd, but it, you know, it has a huge- Great game. De- devoted Great fan game. base. Like, well- the original, I mean, just Diablo 2 yeah. is an amazing game that I think anybody who played it when it came out or around the era that it was out, I think it definitely was like a memorable part of your life that you won't forget, at least for me. Mm-hmm. Like that was, I, I, yeah, I, I think back on that game fondly. So I'm looking forward to this. It looks great. Eight player co-op. That's insane. The graphics look good. I think I got to play the beta or like I managed to, I managed to play the, the alpha and that was quite fun. Um, but yeah, officially coming out, what is it? I think I got the date here, September 23rd uh, on PC. Obviously, yeah. keep in mind, this is for Blizzard. So this is not an Xbox exclusive. But I, no. It's not going to be on Game Pass or anything like that. But no. it was nice of them to show it. It looks good. It looks, uh, looks exciting. It looks fun, you know? Yeah. Uh, the next game uh, I was excited to see because it falls into what I was talking about. Um, the games that I don't know if I would have bought, but because it's coming to Game Pass, I will be playing, which is... A Plague's Tale, uh, Requiem, yeah, which is a sequel uh, or yeah, yeah, it's either a sequel which, or a spin off or whatever, or of, a prequel. Well, yeah. I, I think it's a sequel because I never played the first one. The first one is on Game Pass, yeah, I just haven't had the chance to play it yet. And the first one, it's it looks like it's got to be a sequel because I'm pretty sure the first one, the cover is the same chick but younger. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, I think it is a direct sequel. It looks like, it looks cool. Look, watching this is actually going to make me go back and play the first one. Yeah. Cause I wasn't really that interested in the first one. It, I know it was story rich, but yeah. like gameplay wise, it didn't look too exciting, but I'm going to go back and play it now just so that when this one comes out, I can play it. Cause this one looks really fun. Yeah. 2022. So th- to me, that's like the perfect game for game pass. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's, mm. that's where it gives going. you time to play the original, you know, yeah. it gives you more than enough time to play the original. Yeah. Uh, they showed far cry six, uh, which is not an Xbox exclusive or mm-hmm. on game pass. It's coming out October 7th, 2021. Uh, Fun little trailer there. Uh, not much to say about that, at least from my side. I mean, side. well, at least now I know where they're going with it. Because, like I said, I didn't really like uh, the Far Cry games. I like them, but they're all kind of the same. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, at least this one, they they decided that, hey, we're going to give you crazy weapons. Mm. Like, they were like, that's the spin this time. I'm, <laughs> I'm not too sure. It does look cool, though. The, the, the weapons do look fun. 
the still don't think it's a game that I'd pick up though. You know, unless yeah. it unless it came to a subscription service, I don't think I'd buy the game. Yeah. But it does look uh, fun. Slime Rancher Two. Not not. This too I'm excited about. Are you? Up. I'm not not yeah. uh, familiar with this. Uh, w it's what exactly just is it? Chilled. It's exactly what the name implies. You are a rancher, and you and you go and you go you go corral your slimes. You put them in a bunch of corrals. You feed them. There's farming. There's feed. <laughs> it sounds stupid, but it's a really like anxiety relieving kind of game. I was playing it right before the stream. Funny enough, I was playing the original right before the stream. And the original involves you, like, you have this machine that allows you to suck up slimes. They're really adorable, and they bunch them around. And then you shoot them into, like, these corrals. And then you got to feed them and look after them. And, and then, basically, you feed them and you collect their poop because their poop is money. <laughs> and then you use their, their poop money uh, to spend it on upgrades. Uh... And you build your farm. You build your little, your ranch of slimes, you know? Mm. It's, 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 it's. It's yeah, it's a fun game. It's like it's not a difficult game. There's no like combat or anything. Well, there's combat, but th th you can't call it that. You're just shooting water at the bad slimes. It's like having a sprayer that you spray at your cat for doing bad things. It's mm -hmm. that's the gist of the combat. But it's a fun game. So I'm looking forward to it. The game looks colorful and fun. Um, the I believe the original slogan for the game was the happiest game in the world. Which was it was just supposed to be the happiest game in the world, or like which it was. It was cute. It's happy. It's mm -hmm. fun. You know, I'm looking forward to the sequel. I didn't think we were gonna get a sequel. Yeah. Well, guess what? Like, it's on it, Game Pass, yeah. so you don't. Have the current to... one is also on Game Pass. Yeah, the, they so... just recently added the, the first one, which is why I'm playing it. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, another yeah. another game. Fun. Uh, Treaders, which is just a, this. A... I'm so underwhelmed for. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so underwhelmed. It's a... <laughs> It's so meh. It's like a it's, snowboarding it's, game. It, there's nothing to it, man. It doesn't look like it's any better than Steep right now. And it's like, why would I play this game when I could just play Steep? You uh, know? I mean, it's on, like, like I said, it's on Game Pass. So it's like, there's no... Steep is also on Game Pass, yeah. which is like, I would literally rather play Steep, which is on Game Pass. At least then I can switch between skiing, snowboarding, December like, you know, 2021, wingsuiting. Okay. You know? This next one I am actually excited about um, Atomic Heart because I I'd yeah. heard, I had heard about this game for a while now. They've been developing it, and it kind of I just hadn't heard anything about it recently. And the fact that it's coming out on Game Pass, um, I don't th I don't know if they had a date for it or not. Let me take a look, but. Um, it's like this uh, like Russian post-apocalyptic. Um, yeah, there's no FPS where it's like has robots and powers and all that stuff. It's from. Uh, it will be Mon day Monfish. one on Game Pass though, but yeah, no date just yet. Uh, so it's not an Xbox exclusive, but it's yeah on, be Game, on Game Pass, Pass day thing. one. Like I yeah. said, that that that's that's the the killer for against Sony is like, okay, well if I, you know, if I have an Xbox, I can play this for no additional cost or I can get it on PlayStation five and pay the money <laughs> to play. And like the, the $70 that the game is most likely going to cost. Yeah. So it's, it's just one of those things where like, it's just, doesn't this make looks sense. awesome. Dennis came out of nowhere. Like I think we covered this a while ago where it got announced and we there was some information about it, but once again, like no footage, no nothing. We had no idea what to expect. Now we see the now we see some footage. It looks great, and I like yeah. It was called Atomic Heart, yeah. and it, like the first thing that just sh jumped into my mind was like freaking. It looks like um, cyberpunk Fallout. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like that's kind of what it like makes me think of as like a cyberpunk yeah. Russian cyberpunk Fallout. You know, or Russian cyberfall for short. Yeah. It's it looks fun. It looks exciting. Like I can't wait to see see or hear more about this. Like what amazes me is that that was what we saw, and yet we know so little about it. You know, I would have I would have imagined that before that video, we would have at least heard more about the game itself, or like you know the setting, or like the genre, the mechanics, those kinds of things. But yeah, yeah. Uh, looks uh, great. Looks fun. See, speaking of cyberpunk, uh, the next game replaced. Which is a mm. 2D side scroller, which had a very unique look to it. People were screaming, 
it's 2D cyberpunk. Um, but it's it, it's it's not really. It doesn't look like it has any type of RPG like elements to it. It looks like mm. a, a you know more like hack sci- and slash. Yeah, 2D yeah, exactly. Plat- platformer, looks, sli- yeah, nar- look- narrative based. I love these type of games. Like I said, it looks um, really cool. Yeah, they're usually not full price either because, like I said, you can usually finish them. Like, they're usually fairly short. Yeah. You know? Well, it's going to be will, no yeah. price to me on Game Pass. <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> uh, that does uh, look like, that does look fun, though. I like the art style. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they showed uh, some more stuff from Grounded, which has been kind of out on Game Pass. Is it? It's like it's yeah. like a beta, right? It from my understanding, it's like Are a they beta call version. A game preview. Yeah, I, I guess that's like their version of early access. Yeah. Here's the thing, the games, the game's fun, but I, I, unless you have people, no one to play it with, like I, I don't have anybody that wants to play it, mm. and the game is just boring alone. It's mm. it's like desolate. It's kind of kind of scary and difficult. Like first time you're fighting a spider or an or even an ant, you know. Like the game, the game can be pretty daunting. I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun game though, if you have if you have friends to play it with. Fun game. Yeah, and that's from Obsidian. Uh, yeah. All right. Just uh, so weird. Yeah. Uh, they said Among Us, uh, June fifteenth. It's getting a fifteen player. Th- it's getting fifteen players with three imposters, which I think is a stupid idea because yeah. like. It's, the first five minutes of that game is just going to be 15 people yelling at each other about sus, sus, ooh, ooh, sus, <laughs> he's sus, ooh, and it's going to be 15 kids yelling over each other. It's a nightmare. I think that's one of the worst game modes they could have added. But they are planning on adding other game modes. I just yeah. wouldn't have led with that one, you know? Yeah. I and mean, we talked about this in our podcast, that the, the kind of the trend of Among Us is kind of dying out um, Yeah, right now. It's not as popular maybe uh, it'll have a, a second coming it literally the only thing that could bring the game back is if the streamers start playing it again yeah um next game i don't know anything about this game uh and i don't even know how to pronounce it you in chronicles yeah all i know is i don't really particularly care i think this is from the people that did octopath traveler hmm. is it is it it doesn't right. say so, but the art style in the gameplay is in- is shockingly similar. Uh, they raised apparently four point five million dollars at a Kickstarter campaign in twenty twenty. Hmm. Um, that's that's a lot. In twenty twenty, they raised four point five million from Kickstarter. That's actually impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, so clearly, people want to play the game. Um, not my cup of tea. Not not the kind of game I would enjoy. It does look pretty, but not the kind of game I would enjoy. Um, not the kind of game I want to play really. Yeah. particularly uh, but yeah i also don't know how to pronounce it <laughs> yeah the next game looks interesting this game looks like it would be fun with other people which is the scent which is kind of that three yes. quarters perspective yes. you know co-op action shooter rpg in a cyberpunk world that just looks cool and it's on game pass so it's it's one of those type of games i would never buy but if it's on game pass and i want to play with some friends that's kind of looks 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 cool and it looks like you could have a good few hours playing this game you know so yeah this is actually something i knew about a while ago because it would they added it to game pass a while ago i don't know if it was like something that they just forgot that they did but on the game pass for pc app it says coming soon like games that are coming soon and the ascent's been there for a while like you could pre-install it like i could install it right now if i wanted to can't play it until like the 29th i think but yeah. um i can install it right now which is odd uh yeah no so that that's cool i'm just glad i got to see more of it like it looks fun looks exciting and hey it's gonna be on game pass i don't have to buy it i can just try it yeah i'm looking at the scent website right now which is like included with xbox game pass or you can buy it for 26.99 yeah i'll mm. uh get to play it on game pass <laughs> you know oh, it's great like game pass. oh yeah already got it yeah so uh that's kind of cool uh age of empires four yes this this i'm stoked for actually really because like it it was a game that i was excited for regardless because even if it didn't look good i just really really want to play a new rts i don't care who does it i don't care what's what it's about i just want to play a good rts that's something new that i haven't played before you know what i mean i'm i'm gonna cry if i bring up warcraft 3 reforged so we're not going to talk about that. Mm. But uh, 
so I was excited for this game regardless of what it was going to look like. But it looks good, Dennis. It looks good. Like we saw some, we saw some actual proper gameplay mm-hmm. of the game, and it looks fun. I'm really, really looking forward to this, and it's going to be day one on Game Pass, which I'm even more October twenty eighth. Yeah, the, yeah. They currently have all the other Age of Empires on Game Pass as well, if you want to play them. Um, but yeah, I was never, a, I was actually never a fan of Age of Empires, but mm. I just, I'm just so badly craving an RTS game that I will play it, <laughs> and it looks good. Like it looks really, yeah. Like, it's one refreshing. of the most. It's one of the most famous uh, RTSs. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, another. This one's Game Pass they... PC only, um, which makes sense yeah. because RTS is on consoles. Play, yeah. You need a mouse Good and luck. keyboard. Yeah. Uh, Good luck. Next one was kind of funny. The Outer Worlds two announcement. Look, yeah, it's what a, a ga- self aware commercial. <laughs> yeah. Look, we knew it was coming. You know, we didn't know. I didn't know if they were going to announce it. Um, but basically, they made fun of themselves, basically saying, look, we know there's no real substance to this trailer. So they were making fun of itself, like saying, hey, we're going to show you uh, well, shots of the kind world. Of making fun of the industry. You yeah. know what I mean? Here's like some lens flares. Yeah. Here's, <laughs> Here's some, some over shots the top of the lens flare that you don't yeah. need. No gameplay, you know, <laughs> no date of release. Here's a um, bunch of footage that will have absolutely nothing to do with the game. <laughs> yeah. but, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So cool. They had it in there. It was funny. Yeah. Um, we know we know it's coming. Yeah. We, we know it's On happening. Game what, Pass, what was the they didn't even 20... have a release date. They didn't give a release date. Was there no, yeah, there's no release date? Yeah. I don't think it's 2022. I think it's 2023. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 2022 is too, I think, too soon for this game. If Starfield's coming out next year, end of next year, Outer Worlds too. I, yeah, not, it's not coming out for. Yeah, no, a it's bit. true. It's going to come out much later. Um, this next one, Microsoft Flight Simulator, which you also can play on uh, uh, Game Pass um, currently right now. Yeah. Um, it's coming to Xbox Series X on July twenty seventh, twenty twenty one, and the surprise thing is they're going to have a Top Gun Maverick expansion, which look cool. That's cool. That, look, that, that does look cool um wow first of all because i think what they sh- they showed us the game didn't they show us the game running on the the newest xbox uh, i believe so yeah that looked incredible that's yeah. like that like that's that genuinely looked incredible like i know that like obviously uh, that's the kind of stuff i i would expect easily from a pc but like mm-hmm. That was insane for a console. Like parts parts of that looked re like really really real. You know, mm-hmm. um, man, it just makes me want to like take a plane and I want to go fly underneath all my favorite bridges. That's what I want to do. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna clear up a hundred gigs, install the game, and go fly underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. That's what I want to do. Yeah, July twenty seventh on Game Pass. Uh, I don't know when. The, I don't think the Top Gun Maverick comes out until later though uh, yeah i think i think that's in the fall sometime but still looks really good uh i do not on the xbox version but the pc one didn't they add a uh, vr to it if I'm the not uh, P- pc version of i'm sorry i'm blanking yeah let me see the pc version of oh microsoft flight simulator oh i don't know i don't I thought, think so I, I thought they had added uh, not VR controls. A lot of these games, including like squadrons, like but Star Wars, per- well, yeah. they just give you. Well, the I mean, like I know point. that there's a first person. Like there's a first person for Microsoft Flight Sim where you're in the mm. cockpit. Yeah, there's usually that that view. I'm sure that they, um, I'm sure you can get that in VR. So yeah, my, the Top Gun Maverick is coming out on November 19th, the same day as the movie. So mm. that's interesting. Yeah. Another game that no, I wouldn't buy, but now it's on Game Pass. Going to play. Now the next one was a big one. They, there's a reason why they did it second to last. Not my type of game, but the in the chat, I was I was on the IGN one. People were like, they're clamoring for this one, and when it came out and they showed it, they were going nuts over it. Which is uh, Forza Horizons Five. Mm. Um, the you had mentioned that you were just looking at the graphics just because you wanted to think of a, yeah, what Fable would look like. Um, exactly. <laughs> That's yeah, exactly the, what I was. Thinking. I mean, the graphics look stunning. Um, the, the, you know, a lot of realistic environments. They kind of. I will to... say they did a good job hyping the game. Like mm-hmm. I've never wanted to play a Forza Horizon game before, 
because I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, pretty racing game. I'll just play the pretty racing game that I already own on the console I already own, you know? Mm -hmm. I never really... It, it, it never got me to jump to Xbox like mm -hmm. it did for some people, you know what I mean? But this looks f like... I would, like, not like a super large amount of fun, but it looks fun. It looks good. They advertised, I don't know, they just marketed it very well. The, the entire presentation made me want to buy the game. So they did a very good presentation, I think. Yes, but you don't need to buy the game because it's on Game Pass. True. <laughs> um, yeah, November 9th. Uh, I mean, it looks amazing. Um, it does you know. look so good. Yeah. So, yeah, people are going crazy over that. Like I said, racing isn't my game, but they showed off some different modes like uh, the piñata mode and the bowling uh, pin mode and, and playing with other friends that, for me, who aren't like hardcore uh, racing game fans can kind of, hey, let me go check that out. Um, so at the very end, they kind of, before they, you know, revealed that new property of Redfall, they kind of showed all the different... Uh, games that that were coming the one thing they did name drop like avowed fable and perfect dark but yeah you know they were just saying that montage of stuff but they never they i just thought mentioned it i really thought we we're gonna see some more fable perfect dark stuff uh mm. at this show i was really expecting some fable stuff you know i know they like, aren't coming genuinely. out i know they weren't coming out this year but i just was expecting more um so we'll see. And they, they did announce they were working on Forza Motorsports, the next one. Um, so let's talk about Redfall. Uh, it's coming out mm -hmm. in summer 2022 uh, from Arcane Studios, uh, Xbox exclusive. It's an open world shooter. They didn't show any gameplay. It was purely a kind of cinematic. Just cutscene. Yeah. Pure, cut, purely cut, cinematic cut CGI. Scene. Yeah. It's, it's basically vampires in this open world shooter that you can play solo or co-op. Um, I'm assuming four person co-op because that's what the yeah. cinematic implied that it was four person co-op most yeah. likely. What'd you think? And there's look, it looks, here's the thing, right? Yeah, it looks good. It looks fun. You know what I mean? Once again, we're looking at a, we're, we're looking at a cinematic, you know what I mean? Mm. I can't tell you anything until I see gameplay. Yeah. Um, but the premise, I do like the premise because, um, yeah, open open world FPS game, like they, uh, the worlds are usually quite boring in those. You know what I mean? Even if you look at games like, like The Division, for example, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's like this, it's not necessarily the most exciting setting. You know what I mean? At least with this, they gave the world more character instead of just being like, hey, it's a it's a post-apocalyptic world. They're like, look at how much character we gave the world. And I like that. And I hope that the character shines through when the game comes out. I just hope the mechanics are good because yeah. we literally, we, we literally don't know what the mechanics are going to be like. But I like the premise. I like the setting. I like the theme, you know? I hope the locations are more varied, that it's not just nighttime in mm. a town, you know? Like, show me some, some more locations, daytime yeah. at this or that. So it's not just everything looks the same, you know? So exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, I think that's it for all the games. Let's kind of do a quick, like wrap up and overview. First of all, let me get your overview thoughts. And what would you give a score out of this showcase, uh, for Xbox hmm. Bethesda and, and what are you most looking forward to? And what were some surprises, some disappointments? I mean, in comparison to older, if that's difficult, because in comparison to older conferences, I'd say this one was lacking, but also like it's difficult considering the pandemic and everything, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, so if I consider the fact that it has been a difficult, difficult time for E3 in previous years as well, I would give this like an eight out of 10 mm -hmm. in terms of a conference. But if I relate it to older conferences, I'd probably only give it maybe a seven out of mm -hmm. six and a half, maybe seven out of 10. Because there were like, even like the conference where they announced Fallout 76, um, even though like the like I said on an, uh, launch the game didn't do too well, but that that E3 that showcase prior to that game coming coming out was a great showcase. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, like moving forward, I don't think we're gonna get showcases the way we did back then. We're not gonna have showcases with live bands and theatrics and all these cool things happening. You know what I mean? Um, but no, it was it was good. I'd say the thing that I'm looking forward to the most. Wow, we spoke about so many. Um, hmm. 
like I said, like I, said, I, I wouldn't say that there's things that I'm looking forward to. If, I, if there was something I'm looking forward to the most, it's the thing that they didn't show me, which is Fable, you know? But uh, in terms of things that I am looking forward to, um, Slime Rancher 2, that I'm actually looking forward to that. Mm. Um, wow, I'm, I'm blank, Back for Blood, really mm. looking forward to that. Um, and then I'm blanking right now on a couple other ones. Wow, why am I blanking? Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm just going to go through it real quick. Um, yeah, like Starfield, I'm not that excited for because it's going to take forever. Redfall, we don't know much about. The Uden Chronicle, not my thing. I'm, I'm excited for Horizon, for Forza Horizon. I'll see if how it runs on PC. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, that's it. Age of Empires 4. I think that's what, if I had to choose out of everything that they showed me, that's the thing I'm most craving. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish I could be playing that right now. I would love to be playing an RTS right now. Um, for me, I'm going to give them, I'm going to be a little more lenient. I'm going to give them 8.5. Uh, yes, there's a few things missing. Uh, I wanted to see some Fable stuff, some Perfect Dark stuff, and maybe another surprise announcement. They did have a surprise announcement with Redfall, but I, from the looks of it, it's... It looks like it has potential, but I don't know. It's, it's... probably a long, long time off. It, I, it makes me think of like when they announced um, Beyond Good and Evil 2 mm -hmm. and they gave us this amazing epic like CGI cutscene. I was like, oh, it looks so cool, but we're probably not going to get the game for like 10 years or something, you know? Like, I think that's going to be the same. We're not going to yeah. see gameplay for at least like a, another year or so. Yeah. Um, the thing I'm looking most forward to out of this, I mean, it. Yeah, I mean, Starfield is still what I'm looking forward to, but it is a ways off. I guess for closer, I mean, Back for Blood is coming out fairly mm -hmm. soon. It's on Game Pass. That re that replaced game coming out quite soon, too. That looks fun. Yeah, Halo Infinite uh, coming out holiday 2021, whenever that may be. Um, yeah. Atomic Heart was a nice surprise for me because it was a game that had been following yeah. for a while. We that, just, we just that... don't know the just don't know when it's going to come out is the issue. Yeah, my guess is probably 2022. Um, mm -hmm. But it was, you know, it was nice to see that kind of resurrected. Uh, Outer Worlds 2, we, we knew it was coming. So they kind of threw this in just to say, hey, remember that game that was pretty cool from uh, a couple years ago? Uh, we're making a sequel. Uh, Hell yeah. Um, the thing that, okay, I guess my major, okay, my major positive coming out is this whole and I've mentioned it a million times already, is the Game Pass thing. Is like They're giving this value to the Game Pass, especially for the games that, you know, all, obviously everyone's excited about like the big ones that you, like Halo Infinite or Starfield or, you know, um, uh, even like um, this new game Redfall or, or, or whatever coming on Game Pass. But to me, it's like what's exciting is, is these games that I know I just wouldn't have, bought but now that they're on game pass i will try them now out. you get to try them hell yeah that's my thing and i i do think that eventually xbox with this model is is really gonna push sony into a place where they really don't want to go and mm. xbox can do that because they have deep pockets and sony i don't think does um yeah I don't but, think it's like end of the world for Sony. It's not like no. End, it's not like super bad news. They'll still be around. And they'll still be successful. It's just that they're not going to be making nearly as much money as Xbox in a couple. Well, of years from they're now. yeah, they're gonna. I think Game Pass is is just gonna chip away and chip away. Now on the flip side of this, the disappointment thing, actually, besides the whole no fable, no perfect dark stuff, is this. I thought that this show. Remember. Last year, when both next-gen consoles came out, I was like, ah, you know, there's nothing really on there that's making me go, I have to get this console now. And mm -hmm. I really thought with this showcase, they were going to announce more things that were going to come out at the end of this year. But that's not the case. So yeah, because... if, if you think about it, both consoles have been out for a while and there's not really much to play on both consoles. I mean, more so the PS5 has more stuff that you can play than than Xbox in terms of like exclusives. Yeah. But still, neither one is plentiful. I mean, we just heard, remember that game Godfall that like was hyped up? Yeah, apparently, and, and they're, apparently, they're, 
coming out to PS4 now. Yeah, that's because how bad the game did. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, which I played the game; it was pretty, but like it was a little. I don't know. It was missing something. Like it was. I, I heard it's really repetitive. That. I heard it's really repetitive. Yeah, yeah. it's. I guess that's what it was. Because after a while, I was like, nothing's really changing in the loot. Mm. Because you start off looking legendary, there's not much of like. When you unlock better loot, it's like, okay, I already look like a god, <laughs> you know? Like, half the objective of grinding for cool loot is to look cool, but if you already look cool when you start, what's the point, you know? Uh, yeah. So put, my... me, put, me in, put me in, like, a freaking sandals and, like, briefs or something. Let me grind, you know? Yeah. So my whole thing is, like, if they had announced that, okay, this would never happen, but I'm just saying hypothetical. Let's say they're, like, Starfield coming out this fall. Um... Uh, Outer Worlds 2 coming out this fall. Uh, you know, what's what's another big game that they're, they're, they're... Oh, Fable, Perfect Dark. They're all coming out this fall. Then you're like, oh my God. You got to get an Xbox Series X. You got to you know? get a you, console, you could, yeah. Yeah, you got to get it. You got to get Game Pass. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's more like they're slowly getting to that point, you know? They already have a great library. You know, you're, you're getting these day one exclusives. Um, but... It's not coming, you know, they're they're slowly dripping it out. Um, it was cool seeing that one kind of graphic that showed that, like, it wasn't every single week, but it was, like, almost every week they were going to have, like, a new game on Game Pass, which is actually follows the Netflix model, which is, like, okay, yeah. every week we got to have something new out, and then people will feel like they're getting value for their money, you know, so. I will say there is one downside to Game Pass, uh, and it hasn't happened to me yet, but I think it's going to happen soon, which is a lot of th games get removed from Game Pass. Mm. That's something that Game Pass, they don't really talk about. They never really, like on the app itself, they'll always be like, hey, watch out. These games are leaving soon. Yeah. So be sure to finish them before they leave or something, which I think I'll, which I think is cool. But also like that is the one downside to well, not just Game Pass, but any subscription based gaming thing where it's yes. like with Steam, if I buy a game on Steam, unless steam disappears which one day which i highly doubt like i know my i'll be able to play that game on my pc 10 20 years from now yeah. you know what i mean whereas on game pass like there's a lot of games where i there's a lot of games that i loved playing on game pass that aren't there anymore and i'm glad i finished them and got my worth but it sucks that i can't play them again you know yeah. but to combat yeah, i mean that, it's not the, that's not going to happen to studios that they own but yeah that's what other the, studios yeah. that's the whole thing is they bought so many studios that that's not gonna so think about this that's not going to happen to Redfall. That's not going to happen True. to Forza Horizons 5. It's not going to happen to Microsoft Outer Flight. Worlds. Yeah, not going to happen to Microsoft Flight Simulator, Outer Worlds, Age of not Empires. Not going to happen to anything Bethesda related, that's yeah. for sure. Age of Empires, Grounded. Um, it's not going to happen to... Let me see what else. Halo. It's not going to happen to... It might happen to Hades, though. Yeah. Um, it might happen to... I will say that. It might happen yeah. to Hades. Uh, but at least I've already finished Hades. It might happen you know, to back. For, it might happen to back for blood. Um, but yeah. yeah. So, anyways, yeah. Overall, I think it was a pretty good conference. Not, not the total home run that I was hoping for or expecting, mm. but I do think it was. I much... wasn't disappointed. I wasn't like blown. Away. I wasn't blown away, but I I wasn't disappointed. I was happy. It was if like, I was a, my... if I was a shareholder, I'd be like, yeah, good job. It you looked. Know? It was a much stronger showing than last year because I was on. Remember mm -hmm. how critical I was about Xbox <laughs> last year? Yeah. Um. So it was, it was a much stronger showing, not a home run, but still pretty good. So yeah. All right, guys. Uh, I think that's it uh, for our uh, uh, Xbox Bethesda E3 2021 showcase kind of review. Uh, let us know what your favorite games that they announced or showed off were. What your most uh impressed by what you're most disappointed by um are you planning on getting an xbox series x uh and how 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 does this affect your potential uh purchasing um you can make sure to subscribe to this channel it's uh, youtube.com slash revog uh you can follow me on twitter at think hero uh on instagram dennis.tzng and then josh where can people find you you guys can find me on Instagram at josh.toki. You guys can find me on Twitch at josh.toki. And you guys can find me on TikTok at josh.toki. <laughs> All right, cool. And so this was our kind of showcase special. We're going to talk more E3 stuff as stuff hopefully comes. Hopefully about, uh, may, may, hopefully we'll cover, uh, we'll maybe do another video in like a day or two from now. Yeah. 
Uh, the Square Enix event is live right now, and they've already announced a few things that uh, look, I wouldn't say exciting, but they're worth talking about. So we'll cool. hope maybe we'll make another video in a day yeah, or two. Yeah, maybe we'll make a, if there isn't big, big announcements from a particular yeah. uh, studio, maybe we'll just do an all-encompassing E3. I know one person on the comments was mentioning that we should definitely cover Nintendo stuff, so... Yeah. Um, yeah. Let 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 let's see what uh, comes out on Nintendo's announcements as well, and Sony with their non E three thing. Whenever they decide, whenever to that, that happens, or yeah. whatever that's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, until next time, we'll see you guys later. See you later.